Y'all, I am so tired. Um, this lighting's a bit weird, but you know, I just needed a little bit of sunshine, so I popped in here to make today's video. Um, I just wrapped my latest short film, Flea. It was a lot. We're actually not completely done. I have a lot of pickups to do, but I did wrap principal photography with the actors, etc. Um, lots of all-nighters, lots of hard work, um, a great crew, great actors. Really excited about it. So excuse my tiredness, excuse um, the lack of sleep. I just did another all-nighter for another project right after. Um, but we're here today to talk about a tool that we used on Flea that I thought was really exciting. Um, and I'm sure that you've heard a little bit about these things before, but I've never actually got to use one myself. It's really opened up a lot of things in my head, um, a new way of practically shooting things, and I'm really excited about it. What I'm talking about is volumes or LED walls. Now this isn't a, you know, the one that we use wasn't an exact volume, I wouldn't say. It doesn't have the overhead LED functionality to be able to match lighting like that, but it mostly did the same thing, and practically speaking, it did exactly what we needed it to do. So there was a lot of visual effects in the short film. So we ended up using the LED wall to just practically shoot some shots, be able to get a background that otherwise we would not be able to get in reality because it was unsafe or it was too hard to get in reality. Um, but then also we would take that background and turn it into a green screen to get a secondary version of it if we wanted to manipulate it more in post. And that's what's so cool about using an LED wall versus using a practical background or versus using a regular green screen is, is that it just has so many extra possibilities of how you can use the tool. So if you're not familiar with LED walls, they're basically giant TV screens that are behind your subject when you're shooting. Um, but the one that we were using, it was connected to a computer that could run Unreal Engine, and we could actually build full 3D environments and put them behind our subjects. Now this differs from green screen because you don't just shoot on green screen, hope the lighting matches, and you can't really see what you're gonna get until you get into post, and you have to manipulate the background to get it where you want it. Now you can shoot plates for that, you can shoot real life backgrounds and then insert them behind your green screen, um, or you can use a 3D model for that as well. But for this, you're basically be able to use everything at once. So you're able to build a 3D model of your environment, and then you're able to add textures, photo textures from the environment to make it as real as possible. But the thing that vo volume really adds is the parallax. So when you're doing like a green screen, or if you're just shooting on a blank canvas uh, behind you, you when you move the camera in and out, you know the actual background doesn't parallax like it would. It doesn't the the distance between the background and the foreground doesn't change like it would in reality. Where the volume is so cool is that you can. Actually use those 3D spaces, those digital 3D spaces, and there's basically nodes all over the room. There's these little sensors all over the room, and then you have a sensor on top of your camera. So when you move your camera in or side to side, the background actually moves with your camera and changes the perspective to match the lens and the camera. So we basically had to tell the people in the control room, hey, we're shooting on these Sony Venice, we're shooting at this aspect ratio, we're using these lenses, and then they dial that in, you put the node on top of the camera, where it needs to go and then you can calibrate that camera and so when you're moving in and out it actually functions as if you were there in reality. So initially speaking I thought we were just going to shoot plates and use it as just a background and then you know the background would go out of focus when you open up the lens and get your focus but on the day we ended up using basically everything. We, were, we actually ended up using green screen for some shots. We used you know, we put practical things in the room, like we had to use this railing with the railing in the shot to add a practical element, but then had the background be a 3D element, a completely made up element um, to act as our background. And then sometimes we would use plates that we shot. So it was just really handy to be able to do whatever you wanted. Basically, when it, in filmmaking, the thing that is the hardest part is having full control of what you're doing. And the volume, the LED wall gives you that control. And going back to what I said before, the thing that's really practical about it is that you can actually see your lighting as you're shooting it. So you can light the set and then you can look at your background and you can see, does it match? Do the colors match? Um, you can change the brightness of your background. You can actually darken the background. Hey, I need the exposure on the background to come down. Well, in reality, you would have to like ND down the lens or stop down the lens. And then you have to bring up your exposure in the foreground. But in, in this case, you just, you just do it in the background. It's like you're mixing the digital space with reality and it's a really fun way of working. So another helpful thing we did, you know, in pre-production, um, we actually scanned the, the, we were basically shooting on top of this dam and we scanned the whole dam in the surrounding environment 
with a drone and got all these photos of it. And then are able to import that into computer and turn that into a 3D space that we could manipulate um, when we're doing the shots. So we could move, you know, we could put the actors wherever they needed to be in that space. Now this isn't a perfect way of doing it, but you can manipulate anything you want. And so that's exactly what we did. So we had the background on top of, you know, we're on top of the dam for these shots, but the background is supposed to be these trees and a little bit of water below. And we are able just to have those 3D modeled um, thanks to StoryPixel for helping us 3D model these and then be able to put them in the background while we were filming. And this made it, we were able to shoot, you know, 15 different shots they were all gonna have visual effects on them. And we shot them all just on the LED wall and got it all done in about four hours, rather than having to somehow get these things practically or shoot plates and then do green screens and comp everything together. Um, we didn't have to do any of that. We just got to shoot things practically. So the lighting aspect of it is really cool because we basically light the scene. We use the reference shots from the day when we actually sh we actually shot the scene, the, mo the rest of the scene day one of shooting. And then we went into here on day three. So we already had reference shots. We already had the, sh the other shots from the room that we were able to match the lighting to and that made it really easy as well. But if you look at a lot of shows like Mandalorian or the new show 1899, they're actually shooting almost the entire show on these volumes um, and they don't have to go out and match it to anything else. But they're able to have full control right within the studio, which honestly got me thinking, I kind of want to write a short that we could do fully on the volume, fully on the LED wall. I'm actually going to be helping someone else that's doing a short here soon. I'm going to do the cinematography on it. Um, that's going to be fully, you know, it's a space film that's fully on the LED wall. And I would love to do something like that as well. Uh, I think, just think it's a really exciting piece of tech that we should play with more. And it, it just made mixing realities much easier to do. Now there's obviously a few complications with doing this. Sometimes the background just doesn't look right. Um, and that's where it gets really handy where you can just basically change the background immediately into a green screen, shoot, shoot the same thing again, and then you can change that background in post. Now I have used these LED walls before to actually light the scene as well. There was a commercial I did uh, a year or two ago and I was able to just, because this screen wraps all the way around. It went really far wide and then you can basically it wraps around the side. So basically you say you want a big eight by key. Okay, we'll just put up white on the screen and make an eight foot square on it. Now you have an eight by key. You don't even have to set up a stand. You don't even have to set up a light. Obviously your light quality is not going to be perfect doing this. And there are some frequency issues when you shoot on these LED walls. You kind of have to adjust your shutter depending on how nice the wall is or what kind of powers run to it. Um, so I think we, you know, we mostly had to shoot, uh, as long as we were shooting like true, true 24, we just, we just had to change our shutter ever so slightly to make it match. Not a big deal. Just to get rid of some of that banding and stuff that can occur on a wall because the Hertz is different. And then on top of that, we were able to use a wire rig. So um, the person that I'm helping that actually operates this LED studio, he had, he needed a wire rig for his space film. So he had built this big wooden cube that he, that he then hung a harness from. And we actually put our actors inside the harness so they could float in the air um, because, well, not to spoil the film, but there is a little bit of some stuff like that happening in the film. And so we, you know, we were able to strap her into the wire rig and then put her on that background and it just looks so real it just works so well um, you get full control this way and you know what was also great is that we were not in the cold anymore you know we're shooting in a nice studio and when we shot most of the film we're shooting all night and we're shooting and it was like 40 degrees outside and it was painful and awful um, and you know subscribe to the channel if you want to see more of the content about what we did at night we actually got in the water at night it got pretty real but in this scenario, we were just in a nice heated room um, and we were able to do stuff like this. The wire rig was really cool, you know, strapped her in, be able to hoist her into the air. And uh, I've never but I've never used anything like that before, but it's something that it was really exciting to finally do. Um, it's not a proper wire rig you, I, you would have like in Holly, like on a Hollywood set, but it was, it did perfectly work for what, need, what we needed to do. You, of course, you have to comp out the wires in post, um, which does slow down things a little bit, but rather than comping out everything, including the background, we were able to just have the background in there and not worry about that as much. So something I'd really like to use for this in the future would be doing like driving shots. So like the place that we were shooting at had a garage door. We could just drive a car in there if we wanted to, and you could get perfect audio, not have to worry about a process trailer or have you know your actors worrying about driving which we did some of that already on this film and it's a bit dangerous to do that you know they're acting and driving at the same time so being able to just bring in a car or something like that and then just shoot your backgrounds that way uh seems like a really awesome thing to do and i'm going to definitely try to do this in the future now, this is not a new idea by any means but it's not something that you get the opportunity to do very often because these led walls aren't in every state in the country um we got kind of lucky that this one had been developed. Which kind of brings me to today's sponsor, which is Storyblocks, which is a royalty-free stock footage site. You could 
get whatever background you wanted from that website and then throw it up behind your actors for whatever you needed. So like I said, you can build this space in 3D, but you could also put practical footage on the screen um, to you know act like it's reality. But you'll need a place to get that footage and that's where Storyblocks comes in. Storyblocks has an insanely large library of high quality footage that you can use when you don't have the time or resources to get the shot that you need, or if you're looking for something to put on a background like this LED wall. The footage is royalty free and their subscriptions can fit any budget with unlimited downloads. It's super easy to find the clips you're looking for using their intuitive filtering options and browsing features like frame rate, resolution, or motion graphic templates. And they also have a new Premiere Pro plugin, which integrates their library right into the platform, giving you direct access to all their footage at any time during the edit. So find out more about Storyblocks by using the link in the description below. Thank you Storyblocks for sponsoring this video. And so the LED wall really helped us out. So there's gonna be a lot more behind the scenes footage coming out about my short film. It was a very ambitious short film. Um, it's going to be about 20 minutes long. Um, lots of scenes, lots of locations. It's it's just, it feels bigger. It feels like a movie and doesn't, and to me doesn't feel just like your, you know, your kind of normal short film that you might have seen before at, at you know, your local festival or whatever. So if you wanna hear more about the short film, definitely subscribe to the channel. Give this video a thumbs up. That would go a long way for me. There'll be a lot more stuff coming out about it, what lenses we shot on, what camera we shot on, how we did some cinematography. Then obviously just going through and just showing the whole process. You know, I love to sit around and just watch be behind the scenes of films being made. So I think that you will like that kind of content that will be coming up soon. So that's all for me today. Until next time, guys, I'm Sister Sakurai. See ya.